it's great to see you. Great to see you too. So I want to catch up for our readers. Uh, are you still, where are you training out of now? Portland. You're in Portland. Mm -hmm. And uh, your coach? Pete Julian. Is Pete. Yeah, because I remember you moved him in, was it 2020? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, how big is your club? How many people are in it? So like seven or eight? Uh, Not that many, right? Mm, there may be about... I think about t maybe 10, 11, maybe. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's gotten a little bigger, but there's also, like, it goes all the way to marathon and everything, sure. so it's a little bigger. How many people do you train with on a daily basis? So, usually about, like, there's usually about five of us okay. at practice. Mm -hmm. um, and Pete's with you, is it three days a week, or do you train every day uh, with Pete when you're in Portland? No, he, we train on the track, like, about three to four times a week, and then the other days are kind of broken up with other things. Talk to me about 2022. Mm -hmm. um, what were your takeaways from 2022? Um, as a year or like in track wise? In track wise. Track wise. My takeaways from 2022 were, uh, I don't know. I feel like track wise, it was. It revealed a lot to me um, as far as strength wise, mm -hmm. mentally. I feel like I'm not, I wasn't as mentally strong as I probably thought I was or could have been. And it's funny because I was reflecting on this, and I think my awareness of just things going on in the season, just what I would say wasn't as intentional. Sure, okay, okay. So that's something I'm working on this year. It's like, being aware and being mindful and my intentionality being very present with every decision, every choice, whatever. And so all in all, um, with that lack of awareness, I feel like I just didn't have control over, I didn't have a good kind of wrap on things going into world champs like I wanted to. Mm -hmm. So I learned, um, like, I would say, like, emotionally, I felt myself actually being probably at a high anxiety-wise. Although I was so excited about the event in World Championships being in Eugene, yeah. I feel like there's a thin line where if you don't have that mental strength, it can kind of turn into a negative anxiety-wise. Um, so all in all, to answer the question, a takeaway would be that to gain mental strength and like ways of kind of going about being ready for a performance. Um, and then also just like the intentionality of getting ready for a performance. Yeah. Um, and actually just enjoying everything truly for what it is. And I think that was one takeaway that I would say is still going into today. It's just really accepting the outcomes and still having joy. Cause I feel like my year still ended on a good note, even though my track expectations that I had for myself weren't fulfilled. Um, so last time you talked was 2020. Yeah. And then the pandemic hit. And yeah. You're doing a lot of juggling. Um, 2000, As always. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. 2021. Yeah. What are your what are your takeaways in 2021? Because that was a tremendous year for you. Mm -hmm. And um, did it give you anticipation then for 2022? Uh, track wise from 2021, I mean, I feel like it was more so one of those things where you everyone is trying to do the best they can given what you have to work with. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so. That was a year that I was, I would say, it was a blessing how I was able to adjust to the group and the coach I had and come out with such a, a great um, result. Um, I feel like I didn't finish, like not finish, I didn't run it how I wanted to run it. So that was kind of the immaturity part as a, as a racer that I felt like I could have done better. But all in all, I learned gratitude because um, I feel as though, I feel as though when I got bronze, my, because I'm such a competitor, that my initial thought wasn't, it wasn't the best, like what people normally think, because I'm yeah. such a competitor. But later on, like just really honing in on 
everything in my faith. And sometimes I feel like I'm hard on myself, but me being hard on myself is what produces, <laughs> you know, you gotta be hard on yourself for discipline, but sometimes I feel like it's truly ingrained in me instead of like being able to have times where you really just are enjoying the moment. Um, and so I really just took like being more, having more gratitude and really appreciative of every result, like, but actually action wise, truly matching my actions to my words. Um, so yeah, it, that was a lot, but 2021 was a year of really honing in and, and becoming more gracious and accepting and like appreciative of every moment. Was it weird not to have a crowd in Tokyo? Or did you even, I mean, you seem so focused when I observe you, because I'm watching yeah. the race, right? <laughs> You are so focused on what's going on there, and it's just the people on the track yeah. where you got to go, right? Yeah. Did, you, did you notice that there were not people, really not a lot of people in the stadium? Well, if you can remember in 2021, that's when people were using, me were using like the audio. Uh, like that. Yeah, so weird. Wasn't yeah. It? yeah. They'd use the audio. <laughs> I remember going to, uh, even in 2020, like running in Budapest, and like it was the, it was the audio, it was like the robot delivering flowers, like that whole kind of thing um but in 2021 I feel like for the Olympics it it was a little different of course because you know other Olympics like it's a, not only the crowd but like being able to support other athletes and all those things so there's a little more restriction but when you're in the stadium itself honestly it just felt it reminded me of my first world champs in Doha yeah um, yeah was, <laughs> oh my God. you know it was a huge stadium but there weren't as many people and so the concept of like I've never I feel like world champs in Eugene was the first time I'd kind of yeah. ran in a, a huge crowd right but Olympics it wasn't too far off from like world athletic well um the you know in Doha so it wasn't that big of a difference really. the um the experience in Eugene last year, I want to talk with you a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, the house that Phil and Penny built. <laughs> I, I think it's an incredible sanctuary of sport, and you're featured there. Um, how did you find out that, that they were going to have images of you there? Were you told beforehand? Um, were you surprised by some of that or not? Yeah, so they had... Uh, my Nike rep had sent me, it was really casual. I mean, how he kind of explained it. I mean, he was just like, hey, like, you know, we wanted to have your image on the tower. Um, and so in my mindset, I'm thinking it's like a tower with, you know, multiple, like a kind of like mural vibe with multiple different faces and everything. And so I was like, yeah, that's a great picture that he showed me. I'm like, you know, out of all the pictures out there, I'm glad he chose this one. Um, and but I didn't find out like they sent the rendering and that when they sent the rendering like of the picture on the tower um I was like oh okay like you know it's not how I thought there's only like five of us and then um but I still thought that it was going to be more people or for some reason or like another woman or something and so positioning wise was the biggest was the biggest surprise not that it's a a big thing or petty but it was like I didn't expect to be like at the top yeah. and I felt like that was just a moment where like I really just had to, I don't know like for me you know religion is deep for me and my faith in God and so it was kind of just this moment of like you know ex um, just a high position sure. but like really important to me and like the woman of faith that I am and just being able to be like on a, on a monument like that and like when I turn on campus to see my picture um that's always like a kind of like a welcome home although like I said I'm not the type to really like bask in the presence of things and I've been working on that but that's always a reminder when I get back on campus of just like that even though I may not have been able to really reflect on like every me every point in my college career that it was enough and it was fulfilling enough to have left an impact such great sure. as that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you feel extra pressure competing in Eugene because of that? I mean, I'm just curious about your mindset. You are really centered and I really like that. I think it's one of the things 
in a crazy event like the eight hundred, <laughs> if you can keep your cool, yeah. is so much of, uh, I think, the secret sauce for you. That's my observation. Yeah. Um, how does that affect you? Well, I had, well, I felt like running, since it was built, I feel like it was the, oh, like, you're running and your face is on the tower. Like, so I got over that part. That wasn't the big thing. I think the big thing for me was last year, really, being excited and, like, wanting to perform. And then just, like, wanting to, wanting to perform, wanting to do great, wanting to win, whatever that was. And um, so I felt like, as I reflect on last year, it revealed to me, like I said, when I was talking about the mental strength thing, like I really had a lot of moments where I was, it, I lost my cool, like even though it wasn't on the track. Yeah. It'd be times where I'm crying at home. I remember talking to Kathy Freeman on the phone um, and I was just like, cause my mentor had connected us and everything. And I was talking and I just started crying. Because I think it just consumes me, because I'm already a type of person that holds a lot of expectation on myself, sure. let alone people close to me. But it was really a time where I felt like I had lost the um, joy of it because I was so consumed on wanting to make the team. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I have to make this team. Yeah. Like, it's a Eugene, like I have to, you know, and I had to make the final. Like. And while I never like to talk about things because I don't want it to be misconstrued as excuse or anything, I feel like when I do reflect on that, that that would be the extra pressure that I would consider. Even though I was, I always make light in situations and find the positivity, there was positivity in the fact that like all in all my heart is with Eugene and like world championships being there and being able to compete there is a moment in itself. But being in the process yeah. and being the athlete, you know, it's different when you can watch it, but when you're in it, I think there's um, there's an overlap that kind of consumed me last year. That, that took the fun out. What did Pete do to help you kind of center yourself? Yeah, I think that, I mean, we just focused on the training and knowing that we had put in the work to get there and to perform I mean it's always he always keeps it simple especially when it comes to the final and during the fight like during the rounds just taking it round by round I think a great thing that he does is that he he's not although I it may feel like the end-all be-all because I'm very dramatic too <laughs> it may feel like the end-all be-all I feel like he does a great a great thing with like making it not feel like it's the end all be all. Like he understands that like his athletes are human too, sure. and so he we connect in that way where he he never took world championships like as or any race as like I said just the final one. He's always like there's more like there's more opportunity and we're gonna work through this because this is our first world championships together as well. Yeah. Um, so I feel like he's very comforting when I can be very hard on myself. The Women's 800 is at a place right now that's amazing. Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, you have you, you have a thing, you know, you have Keely Hodgkinson. Yeah. You know, Keely just won her second European uh, yeah. uh, indoor title this week, and I was covering that. Mm -hmm. um, the... And one of the things I love, your races are very dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I tried, I was, on BBC, I was trying to explain you, and I said, you remind me of uh, an American runner named James Robinson, who used to have this incredible finish over the last hundred. Yeah. But the truth is, when you're running your best, you keep your race at a really good pace. Yeah. And as people are collapsing... You're moving, you know. <laughs> How do you keep your cool in the last 200? Yeah. Um, or do you keep your cool? Are you, like, telling yourself, oh, my God, I got to move now, I got to move now? Or, well, no, it's, I mean, I feel like you have to, any, the thing about the eight is, like, every move, every decision that you make has to be intentional. When it's positioning, yeah. uh, when it's your striking time, um, it's very intentional. And so the last 200, that's when you know everything's picking up. Actually, before the 200. I mean, some people pick up at the three. Like, yeah. that's really when it turns up. We have 300 left. Um, but I don't know. I just, I feel like I 
it's one of those things where you just zone out and like you your mus like it's a muscle memory thing like you kind of know um, that it's gonna pick up on the second lap. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think for me, while realizing that that's a strength of mine and that really refers back to just my natural kind of gift of being able to have speed and being an enduring speed runner, I'm learning what the other 600 meters needs to look like as well, <laughs> you know, because that's very important. Yeah. And so when I talk about being intentional, it also refers to like the strategy part and like making sure positioning wise that I'm set up for the best way to be able to finish the way I want to finish. Are you a 400, 800 runner or 800, 1500 runner or a sprinter who's moved up to the 800? <laughs> My uncle likes to refer me to just like a 400 runner that can do the 800. Yeah. Because, I mean, I did the two. Like when I was younger, I did the two, I yeah. did the four. Like, yeah, like, I mean, I have the confidence with the right given day, like, I'll line up next in 100. Like, you know, <laughs> like, that's how, I don't know. It's funny because when I was at Oregon and we, I remember us doing testing. And we would do like uh, like flying 30s. And I remember like out sprinting, like running a faster 30, flying 30 than the sprinters. And Curtis was so mad because he was like, you let an 800 runner come and like beat you guys. But I feel like that just speaks to like me naturally. I'm just wanting to like maximize all of that while also making sure I have what I need to have the endurance part for the 800. I, my observation is you've seen all your races over your career is that you have this incredible ability to accelerate mm-hmm. over the last 150. Mm-hmm. And when Donovan, in 2019, when he won, you know, he started to move with 500 to go. Yeah. And he has a great last 150. Mm-hmm. But he knows his thing. When Jake Whiteman, you know, won. Yeah. Jake had to get the chance won. I yeah. Jake, I mean, it's, you know. Um, I know you never go into a race thinking you're running for third. Yeah. That you know that there could be, that someone could do something, a thing, Keely or whatever, and you're going to, you are going to maximize your opportunities. Yeah. Do you tell yourself with 150 to go, it's time to, to blast? Or do you save something? Like Coach Delander used to do this thing with us where um, he helped me when I was coaching. Mm-hmm. And he told me to always tell my athletes that over the last, like, and this isn't a 10, you accelerated four times over the last lap. Mm-hmm. You always save something for the last 200 to 400. Mm-hmm. How do you, how does Pete talk to you about that last 200 in the 800 meters? Do you save something for that? Have you already kind of thought yourself through, okay, I'm moving up on the, the 300. Okay, it's 200. Look at this. Oh, I've got an opportunity here. What are you telling yourself? What's going on? I feel like there's not, I mean, honestly, there's just not, it really depends on the race. Okay. Um, Like, it's crazy because I can't even remember the World Champs final. Like, when I reflect on it, I can remember being aware enough to know that, okay, I need need to be closer at the one, at the 200 left. Um, But I can't remember everything else. Um, and so when it comes to the two, of course, I think that's just a natural thing for me. Like, yeah. but it's funny because <laughs> now you see more distance people really tapping into speed. They're like, oh, we actually need that, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, it's, it's all, do you go back and watch your races after? Um, sometimes I, my mom and my grandma will, that that's their thing. They'll replay meets from when I was in college. Like that's their thing, but I don't watch them. I think I'm going to start because I am a visual learner. Yeah. And so it'd be good for me to just increase my awareness by seeing my races. And so I think that's going to be something I incorporate. Cause you would think, I mean, some, most athletes like sprinters and everything, they'll watch film and stuff. I just kind of accept the races for how they are, and I revisit them, and I trust my coach to kind of, like, you know, address practice on the things we need to work on. Um, but I think I'm going to start going back to watch my races. What does your grandma want to tell you about racing? <laughs> she, my grandma's just a very wise woman. You know, it's not like she's not the type to just heavily critique. It's very, like, to the point. So, and my mom, too. Um, but, I mean... She's always, like, her thing is, like, 
are you happy? Like, it's the core things for her. Like, are you happy? Like, okay, yeah, you may be sad or may you may feel this way. But, you know, her favorite saying is like, like a water on a duck's back, let it roll off. Like, <laughs> she always comes with like those, you know, those those sayings that like your grandparents pass to your mom. They like, and I love that. I love that because it's so wise. <laughs> so wise and so that's her that's always her thing it's just like you can't change what happened before you can only you know go forward and so those are her type of things like asking the core and like those the things that are are grounded and foundational what does your mother tell you my mom she'll watch the race and I mean her being a former coach also like she, they don't critique the races. I, I have my summer track coach that I'll talk to about a race. Okay. So she'll be like, yeah. And even the way she talks about it, it's not like, you should have did this, it is. It's like, yeah, you could have done this. Yeah, you kind of slept back on this one. Like, it's very conversational and it's a lot of um, like constructive criticism because for me, um, like, I'm my, I'm my, honestly, my biggest competitor. Sure. Like, sure. Other people are in the race, but how I am and mentally is like my biggest competitor. And that's like off track too, like, because I'm an overthinker. And so when I talk to my summer track coach and all these people in my inner circle, it's nice that they can give feedback that's still very constructive and not harsh or critiquing because I already put a hundred times of it. Yeah, on myself, yeah. yeah. (laughs) There were some fast 600s this winter. Mm-hmm. Did seeing what Keeley did and what uh, you know a couple other with hey, Aji mm-hmm. did it, once you try to get you to go indoors, or did you just say, "Hey, this is where I'm at right now. I've got to build up for Budapest." Because it, it's obvious to me that Budapest is your goal for this year. For this year, yeah. Yes. Um, and I'm league final. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I want to, oh, yeah. yeah. I, I got to get back to the circuit. After the world champs, how much time did you take off? I, after world champs, I went overseas and I was going to, I tried to run two races, but then I had some Achilles issues that kind of flared up. So mm-hmm. we just decided to just end the season. Um, and then I did a bunch of stuff with Nike, which was, the, which is what was the kind of like, reason why I feel like my year wasn't it wasn't like end at world champs Mm -hmm. like it was a continuous thing like you know the marathon continues type of thing Mm -hmm. and so I had so much fun with that and then I um got my puppy you know like life just kind of just kept going his name's Oliver Oliver and what kind of puppy is it he's a cockapoo oh yeah that's (laughs) my girlfriend wants so bad right now because I've had big dogs and and so our neighbors have cockapoos. And yeah. They're really cute. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of going. You should. Are you, are you enjoying it? Yeah, yeah. He's he teaches me that the world does not revolve around me. <laughs> yeah, wow. What a concept. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. It's you know, and it's, there's so much to that. Like, but it's so cute because he just has his own personality, and so it's. I feel like for me, I'm very much a person that. Like, it's like, okay, I feel this way. So, like, it's it makes sense why, like, you should understand how I feel. But with him and with dogs in general, they just have their own thing going. Yeah, they just <laughs> but, love. And yeah. it teaches you patience, too. And yeah. so it's been a lot of fun. Um, and then I moved to a different part of Portland. So that was fun, um, just kind of going along with that. But all in all, it's been really good. Um. Give me your goals for 2023. Goals for 2023. I actually have none. This is a year that's very personal for me because I realized where I was mentally last year. And so I call this like my me season. Okay. But when you have a me season, it's it's really you basking in all of you. So I'm learning a lot by myself. And like... Um, in all of the flaws, like I'm depending on like God to like reveal to me who am I? Because you think all these years you would know yourself. And then when you really take the time to like really learn and everything unfolds and all the things that you may have forgotten or things that are just kind of put on you, it really unpacks a lot. And you know, there's a lot that just kind of has outer influence on who you thought that you were. 
Um, but having this year and really taking the time to learn who I am and then also just kind of like learn to trust um, and learn to trust God because I feel like while I thought that I was and in areas I may have been, trusting is truly like not having your say on things. <laughs> Which is really hard as humans for us to do. Yeah. Um, today is International Women's Day. It is. Is there in a woman athlete that you admire, that you would like to tell our readers about, or someone that you look up to? I, so I just did a women's panel with Nike um, mm -hmm. a couple of days ago, and it was Shannon Robery was there, Carmelita was there, Dolce was there, um, Shalane was there, wow. um, Chase Ely was there. Oh, it was you. really yeah. good, yeah. Mariel. It was such a great group of women, it was so empowering. Um, and I don't know, like, I think I, I love Doji. She's just so great. Yeah. And um, I just love her energy. And, like, before I didn't know her, but through the Nike things I've been doing, I've gotten to know her. And she's honestly just so sweet and just has so much personality and so kind. And just, I mean, I've always admired her because she's so fearless yeah. when she coaches as well but just getting to know her on a more different level um i've i've grown to really enjoy her and respect her a lot well raven you survived 27 minutes with me i think that's our record now oh my goodness and, uh, thank you. it got really deep it always does with you it does we have fun, we <laughs> yeah, have fun. We do. my best to pete in your training group I will be seeing you outdoors. Do you know where you're opening yet outdoors? Have you guys, have you made a decision? Yeah, so we're thinking about Prairie View Relays. If not Prairie View, then Texas Relays. Okay, cool, mm -hmm. cool. Well, this is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. We've had the privilege of chatting with Raven Rogers, and she is always a lot of fun, and we wish her a fantastic me season in 2023. Aw, thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.